So in my campaign for president, I made you a sacred pledge that I would strengthen, protect, and defend Medicare for all of our senior citizens. And you see, it's under siege, but it's not going to happen. Today, I'll sign a very historic executive order that does exactly that. We are making your Medicare even better, and we're not letting anyone — it will never be taken away from you. We're not letting anyone get close. You see these uh, people on the other side. These people are crazy, by the way. They're totally crazy. <laughs> but they want to take it away and give you lousy health care. It's pretty incredible. You want to keep your doctors, right? Remember with Obama, President Obama, right? He said, you can keep your doctor, you can keep your play. That didn't work out too well for those people. 28 times he said he's trying to forget. <laughs> you bet never forget, okay? Never forget. As long as I'm president, no one will lay a hand on your Medicare benefits, and that's what we're here to do today. This order is the latest step in my administration's drive to ensure the world's best health care for all Americans. Together, we're creating a health care system that protects vulnerable patients, makes health care more affordable, gives you more choice and control, and delivers the high-quality care Americans deserve. And that's what we're doing. We're strengthening our health care system to a level that nobody thought would be possible. Our economy is booming. We're doing fantastically well. I think it gets a little bit hurt by politics. But our country is so strong, and our economy is so powerful, that even politics, and even when you have the the do-nothings. I call them the do — really, the do-nothing Dems. They can't even affect it very much. We've created over 6 million new jobs since the election. The unemployment rate has reached a 51-year low. Two point — think of that. Think of that. And soon, it's going to be a historic number, like so many of the other numbers. 2.5 million people have been lifted out of poverty. That means more Americans that now have — and that's what it's all about — they have a great way of life. They have affordable health care options. And millions of seniors are enjoying better, healthier, and more prosperous retirements. I should be retiring with you. I should be in this audience, clapping. But I didn't trust anybody to be standing here, because I know what you have. <laughs> thank, you. Yeah, thank you very much. It's true. I didn't trust anybody. It's very important. And nobody's done more in two and a half years, their first two and a half years, than what we've done. Whether it's right to try, whether it's uh, tax cuts, no matter what it is, nobody's done what we've done, not even close. We're delighted to be joined today by a man who is really, really good. He ran one of the largest drug companies and really successfully, and I took him out. Look, that's where, you know, like, that's where the money is? Well, that's where the knowledge is. He ran one of the biggest, most successful companies, I said. Alex Azar, come on out. I want to get you to be the top person in charge of this. I said, so let me ask you, how much bigger is this than the company you ran? It's like hundreds of times bigger. It's a monster. It's a monster. And what a job. Alex Azar, you know who he is. Where's Alex? Wherever you are. Alex, thank you. And he works with Administrator Seema Verma, who has been so incredible. Seema, you have to stand up. What a job. They know the most intricate little quarter sentences. You wouldn't believe it. I say, what about this? And they tell me, unfortunately, it's always like a little roadblock, but we figure our way around. And somebody else is going to be lowering your drug prices with us in a very, very short distance. We're going to be buying them from a slightly different source. A little bit unconventional. A lot of people say I'm unconventional. Sometimes you have to be unconventional. And Alex, when are we going to let Governor Ron DeSantis and your incredible First Lady, Casey DeSantis, when are they going to be 
When are they going to be able to do what we want to do? Alex, when are they going to be able to do what we have to do? Soon. Alex says soon. Because they're going to have a big, fat, beautiful surprise for you. And that has been an incredible couple and a great governor. And the job they're doing is phenomenal. And uh, I was honored to be very much involved in that campaign. And if he was doing a lousy job, I probably just wouldn't have shown up today. <laughs> but he's doing one of the best jobs in the whole country, Ron DeSantis. These guys are warriors. Ross Spano. Thanks, Ross. Michael Waltz. Michael. Great job he does on television. All of them, they do a great job. They're defending us. They're not defending me, they're defending us. Because that was the greatest election victory maybe in history. And they're defending us. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, everybody. Great job. They really are. They're warriors. They go back and they fight, and they fight corruption. And uh, it's corruption what's going on right now. When you see this going on, it's pure corruption. As we gather this afternoon, Medicare is under threat like never before. You know that. You have people that are running for office that have ever happened. You will not be very happy here. Almost every major Democrat in Washington is back to massive government health care takeover that would totally obliterate Medicare. These Democrat policy proposals may go by different names. They have all these wonderful names, like <laughs> It'll never end. I'm sorry I smiled. They'll have me. The fake news is back there. Look at all. They'll say, it's terrible. It's terrible. The president smiled. You know, they want me to admonish you. Who, who, uh, who said that? Lock her up. Stand up, please. I'm admonishing you. Never, ever say that again. That's okay. Sit down. He's admonished. So now they can't do their fake number on us. Thank you. But they may go by different names, whether it's single payer or the so-called public option, but they're all based on the totally same terrible idea. They want to raid Medicare to fund a thing called socialism. Any socialists in the room? I don't think so. Not too many. Anybody? No? No? Not too many in the villages. You don't, you're not big on socialism down here, right? These geniuses, these real estate geniuses said, no, we're not. Not too good. Every one of these plans involves rationing care, restricting access, denying coverage, slashing quality, and massively raising taxes. They want to raise your taxes. They also want to have open borders so that people can just come in and do whatever they want to do. And they have no idea who's coming in, by the way. They have no idea. But you know, when these countries, and now we're getting along great with the countries, Mexico gave us 27,000 soldiers guarding our border, and the numbers are way down. 27,000. I want to thank Mexico, government, the president. Congressional Democrats' extreme agenda would destroy our booming economy very quickly. One of the most disturbing proposals from left-wing politicians involves draining your health care to finance the open borders that we just discussed. That's how they want to finance it. Leading Democrats have pledged to give free health care to illegal immigrants. They put foreign citizens who break our laws and endanger our country, they put them way ahead of American citizens like you who obey our laws. I will never allow these politicians to steal your health care and give it away to illegal aliens. And now in New York, I hear they passed a new regulation that if you use the word illegal immigrant, it, did I hear correctly? They want to charge you a fine of $250,000. In other words, sell your home in the villages, because you happen to say, we don't like illegal immigrants pouring into our country illegally. We want people to come into our country legally through a process, and we're all in favor of that. 
And by the way, the fake news will cut that last part of the sentence off. They'll just put the first part, and they'll say, man, is he rough, he's too tough, I can't vote for him. A nation must put its own citizens first. My administration is standing up for American seniors. And we'll always protect the Medicare benefits you earned and paid for. In the last administration, Democrats slashed Medicare by $800 billion to pay for Obamacare. Not too good, Obamacare. Now, one of their new proposals, backed by more than 130 Democrat members of Congress, would cost, listen to this number, $32 trillion, and that's on the low side, $32 trillion, with a T. We're beyond the Bs, the billions. And reduce Americans' household income by $17,000 per year. Is there anybody in this room that doesn't mind losing $17,000 a year? No? In order to get lousy health care. Though they use many labels, all of the Democrat plans would devastate our health care system. The fake moderates on the left are telling the same lies they did under the last administration. But the last administration, frankly, was moderate compared to the maniacs that you're hearing from today. These are maniacs. Elizabeth Pocahontas Warren. You know, when I used to hit her, I thought she was gone, Ron. I thought she was gone. She came up from the ashes. She emerged. <laughs> now we're probably going to have to do it again, because I don't see Sleepy Joe making it, I'll tell you. <laughs> no, I thought she was gone. Under this administration, we believe that every American family has a right of choice. You have a right to choose. Choice, so important. Like what we did with the vets, choice where they can go out and get a doctor instead of waiting in line for three weeks, four weeks, two months. <laughs> Choice. And you look at the doctor and you look at the plan that is best for you. The truth is, there is no longer a moderate wing of the congressional Democrats. They've gone crazy. They've been hijacked by the radical left. I mean, these people on the left, these people are <laughs> Is that the same guy? I think so. <laughs> sort of like him. I can't admonish him again. I think it's the same guy. He's got a powerful voice. Democrat lawmakers are not trying to build up the country. They only want to wreck and destroy all of the things that we've built up over the last three and a half years, four years, five years. And that's why they do the impeachment crap, because they know they can't beat us fairly. That's the only reason they're doing it. They can't win. They can win. They won. It would be a sad day for our country. It'll be a sad, sad day for our country if they ever won. Among those who would be hit hardest by the socialist takeover are 24 million seniors on Medicare Advantage. A lot of you. One out of two Hispanic seniors. One out of three African-American seniors is enrolled in Medicare Advantage. This very popular Medicare program, been around for a long time, allows private plans to compete to offer senior citizens the absolute best health care. They want to destroy it. While many Democrat plans would eliminate Medicare Advantage, my administration is fighting to make it even better and much, much stronger. With us today is Charles McLaughlin, a 71-year-old Floridian and a Marine veteran of the Vietnam War. Charles, please come up and tell us your story, please. I love you. Oh, man. Hello to the villages. What a great place you guys have here. Wow. I understand that approximately 60% of all you are veterans. I want to say thank you for your service.
and to my Vietnam. Brothers and sisters, welcome home. Welcome home. <clears throat> my name is Chuck McLaughlin, and I'm a Vietnam combat Marine. I'm also a cancer survivor, stage four style. I know a lot about Medicare and the supplement. I used it for breathing tubes, feeding tubes, stitches, staples, MRIs, PET scans, CAT scans, blood tests, hydration shots, chemo treatments, radiation treatments, six months of hyperbaric chamber, to name a few. Anyone that's cured, like me, loves their doctors, loves their doctors. Hey. I also want to say my family financially would have been destroyed without Medicare, destroyed. The facts are now the new date. The politicians on the left are pushing Medicare for all. I say the result will be no Medicare at all. It will collapse under the load or load of the system. It'll overload it. The lines would be incredible. Who knows, I probably wouldn't be here. As far as free stuff, it may be free stuff, but it's gonna come out of somebody else's pocket. There is no such thing as free, period. Hey. Is the Medicare system perfect? No, but it worked for me. Remember, I paid my share. Just a few thoughts. President Trump's plan of Medicare Advantage will give me more flexibility for options to this system. I can pick and choose my needs. Secondly, a program that helps protect us seniors for a fair shake as our bodies fail us. And number three, we must get rid of the waste and fraud. Seems to be in the newspapers weekly. Finally, thank you, President Trump, thank you. for all you do. I want to personally thank him for what he does for our veterans. Finally, and may God bless you and your family for loving America and giving us a renewed hope for our children and our grandchildren. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Charles, and it's incredible. You've gone through a lot. Yeah. You don't look it. Looking, he's looking handsome to me, I'll tell you. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. That's incredible. Like you, all of us today understand the truth. Socialism is not about improving the health of American people. It's about wielding power over the American people, taking things away from American people. In a few moments, I will sign an executive order to strengthen Medicare for seniors, and very substantially. I'll provide Medicare Advantage plans with new tools and options, and it'll help Medicare beneficiaries gain faster access to the very latest and greatest medical devices and therapies. My order also pursues reductions in the unnecessary regulations that you don't need, you don't want to see that never come into effect and that cost a lot of money, enabling doctors and nurses to spend less time on paperwork and more time with their patients that they love. <laughs> to further protect seniors, we are taking action to stop fraud and to stop abuse. It's tremendous amounts of money saved with that. And we'll be able to put that money right back into what we want to have it to take care of you. I'm directing Secretary Azar 
to crack down on criminals, cheaters, and dishonest providers who rob Medicare of the funds you have and the money that you've paid into the system all of your lives. Charles said it. Charles said, you know, I paid for it. He said he paid for it. And now they want to say, let's give it to everybody else, and it's going to be gone in a very short number of years. But you did pay for it. You both paid for it. Today's action is the only really great action that we can take. It's the only choice we have, because this is going to be something that's better than any place anywhere in the world. It's the latest of many important steps that we're taking to dramatically improve health care for the American people. Our vision for the future of health in America has four crucial parts, and we will protect vulnerable patients, number one. We will protect those patients that are so terribly vulnerable. We will deliver the affordability that you need. Prices coming down. As I said, prescription drug prices. First time in over 50 years, Alex, that drug prices have come down for the year. Your average prescription drug price. First time in 50 years, over 50 years. And we're going to get them a lot lower. And I think Ron is going to have some big surprises. We'll be announcing that pretty soon Some for, for really, really Big reductions. People are in, they're not even going to know what happened. So that's what we want. And we're going to give you options and control that you want, and we will provide the quality you deserve. We also ended the terrible gag clauses that prevented pharmacists from telling you about cheaper options at the pharmacy counter. Do you believe it? I thought this was — I thought they were kidding me the first time. Don't forget, I've only been doing this for three years, okay? So, you know. <laughs> These guys have been doing it a long time. But they're not allowed to talk to you about pricing. I said, wait, you got to be kidding. And they weren't. But I got rid of that. Now they can talk about pricing. You can go out and price. You can go to different places. They have to be open and transparent. That was a big deal. That was a big deal. And all these things, you know, they sound so simple. They're tough to get. They've been that way for many years for a reason. You have very powerful lobbyists. You have drug companies, frankly, that don't want that. Why would they want that? Well, you can negotiate price. Why would they want a thing like that? My administration is also working to require drug companies to disclose prices in their television advertisements. And we're almost getting to a point where we're going to be able to get that. So you're going to know what you're paying up front. They can't triple hit you. Essentially, we're holding Big Pharma accountable, and that's okay. They do just fine. Earlier this year, we announced another groundbreaking action seniors have wanted for decades. We will soon allow the safe and legal importation of prescription drugs from other countries, including the country of Canada, where, believe it or not, they pay much less money for the exact same drug. Stand up, Ron. Boy, he wants this so badly. Now, I mean, you go to some countries, and the price is like 50, 60 percent lower, even more than that, I guess, Ron, in some cases. And it's 50, 60 percent lower. The exact same pill from the exact same factory, from the exact same company. And I say, why is it that in Europe, certain places in particular, it's 25 percent of what we pay back here. I said, must be a different manufacturer. No, sir, it's the same one. Must be made in a different factory. No, sir, it's the same one. Everything's identical. They pay 25 percent. We pick up all of the research and development. We pick up everything like a bunch of, excuse me, schmucks. <laughs> schmucks. Right? Not anymore, folks, because in a little while, In a little while, your governor is going to be able to go out and negotiate till his heart's content. And he's going to go to Canada. I know he's going there already, and he's looking at their pricing, and he's going to some of the European countries and others, and he's going to get his drug price down to a level that you can't believe. It's and I also signed, just recently, a revolutionary executive order requiring price and quality transparency. And the man who's really the leader in the world of this 
It's transparency. You can pick your doctor. You can look at their records. You can see how well they did. You can go and negotiate. A man, what really sold me on it, the man who's the best in the world at it, who we used, and we gave you the max plan. Did we give that the max plan, right? That's the maximum plan we gave it to you. And he said something that I loved. He said, sir, this is more important and will go down as more important than any health care that you'll ever come up with. And I said, I like the sound of that. Now, who knows if it's true? But I guess from what I'm hearing, they've done it in certain limited areas. And it's phenomenal. And it's really transparency. And you'll be able to negotiate all over the place. And you'll be able to pick everything you want, from the hospital to the doctor. And it's going to save you a tremendous amount of money. And there are those that say it's more important than even health care at, at a high level. And fourth, my administration is fighting to ensure the high-quality care that Americans deserve. Americans have to get the highest quality. So we have the highest quality that Americans deserve on behalf of five. And we want to ensure access to the doctors of your choice and every day we are going to, as I said, we are going to defend Medicare like Medicare has never been defended again. And it's never needed the defense. It's always been incredible. It's something that worked, and they want to destroy it. In my administration, we know that Medicare is personal. Great health care is about more time with the ones you love, more days with your grandkids, and more freedom to enjoy the most rewarding years of your life, or what should be by far the most rewarding years of your life. You've worked hard. You've worked so hard. And you paid for it. And you've got to enjoy it. It's about getting better when you're sick. It's improving your well-being. And it's getting the treatment you need right when you need it. That's why, in everything we do, we are defending the principles that made America the envy of the world and the American way of life the greatest in our history. And our country has never been greater than it's been right now. Our military is the strongest it's ever built. We rebuilt our entire military. And even medical research is at a new level. It's at a level that we've never had it before. We stand for freedom. We stand for choice. We stand for justice and fairness and accountability. We stand for loyalty to our citizens, love for our country allegiance to our flag, and long and healthy lives for our great seniors. And with your help, we are going to continue building the best, most advanced, most cutting-edge healthcare system anywhere in the world. We are going to expand our growing economy to make retirement easier and better and far more secure. We're going to defend American lives, American values, American families, and America's glorious destiny. There is no country like our country. We see and read things, but there is no country like our country. Right? With every ounce of strength and every bit of soul, we are going to protect Medicare for you, for everyone at the villages and for every senior across this magnificent land, you are going to be protected in many ways, but you are going to be protected. Thank you for being here. Thank you for this incredible enthusiasm. God bless you. God bless our senior citizens, and God bless America. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Should I do it? Yeah! <laughs> I'll do it. All right. It's almost over. Is it two for one? Happy hour. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. God bless you.
Thank you, everybody. Here, grab these fellows. Thank Pass you. them around. Thank you. The Congressman Del Wallen, I know that. Here you go. Come here, man. I love that. I love that. I love those Thank guys. You. Bikers for 45, these guys. <laughs> <laughs> they, they've been there from the beginning, right? That's right. right. Here, pass them around. Pass these around, fellas. Yeah. <laughs> pass them around. Come here, Attorney General, get over here. Come on. Get over here. Thanks. Lieutenant Governor, come on. Please, both of you, come on up here. They're doing a good job, right? Should we give them a pen? I think so. Come on up here. <laughs> 